talk about acoustic guitar strings. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Josh from Music Lesson here. We've got a great new video for you. This video, in this video we're talking about acoustic guitar strings, how to choose them, what's the best ones for you, are they all the same, can we be universal with our judgments on them? Well, the, question, the answer to that question is no. Remember, this is a very personal thing. So we're gonna go through the list here and the article that we've got at uh, musillesson.com. If you haven't seen it yet, it's gonna be down in the description. So you can check that out for you. And in this article, I'm just gonna go through a couple of things talking about the characteristics of them, talking about uh, what you should look for when you choose them, uh, and just some general ideas, you know. And then once you have some experience with strings, you can make your own uh, uh, judgment calls and assessments at that point, okay? So let's just jump right into it. There's countless lines, there's countless different types of brands, of styles, of acoustic guitar string. Um, they all kind of boil down to some similarities, generally speaking, and we'll get into those in a minute. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves some questions first. So first, just get this right off the bat. This video and this article pertains to just steel string acoustics, okay? We're not talking about nylon string acoustics. Even when we talk about a specific brand, uh, a specific type of string later on, it's still going to be a steel core string, okay? So we'll get to that in a little bit here. All right, for the acoustic guitar. Now, things to ask yourself. Do you mostly strum? Do you finger pick? Okay, these are going to be very important things to the type of strings that I that you're going to end up choosing. Okay, uh, if you mostly strum, you can definitely uh, get away with a lot of things. I find that generally speaking, if I'm strumming, I actually want a slightly heavier gauge string. The reason is because I have a little bit heavy uh, picking attack when I play, right? So I find that if I have a heavier gauge string, it, it gives me actually a little bit of leeway. If I if I have a lighter gauge string on my guitar because I pick a little bit heavier, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up buzzing the strings a lot because I'm picking with a pick. Um, and I use at least a medium, generally speaking, uh, to a heavy gauge pick. So that can make me actually uh, make the strings buzz when I pick uh, quite heavily. If you have a very light touch, then this isn't going to affect you as much, okay? If you're finger styling, okay, so let's say you're using like a thumb pick, right? Um, then you might want a little bit heavier gauge string still because you still are using technically a pick of some sort. And again, it can be a little bit heavy. Uh, also, if you're finger styling like that, uh, with a pick, uh, a lot of times the heavier gauge string will give the higher, um, it'll, it'll give the, the thinner strings a little bit more volume, okay? Um, but the low strings become more dominant the, because the, the low gauge strings get higher or get uh, thicker as well, right? So they, they still maintain their dominance because they're lower. Now they're, they're thicker, they're going to produce even more volume, okay? But if you're using like a thumb pick, yeah, definitely something like um, considering what gauge string you're going to be using because thumb picks still tend to pick a little bit heavier, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, if you are bending strings, if you're going to be bending strings, there's two ways you can deal with bending strings if you like to bend acoustic guitar strings. One, you can detune your guitar. I don't do a lot of detuning, like for example, uh, E standard, take that down to E flat standard, right? And you can do that and you can bend your strings a lot more easily because the tension on the strings are lower, right? You can absolutely do that. That is something that works. Um, I don't generally do that just because I play so much in standard. You know, I might do some drop D here and there, but I don't do a whole lot of detunings. Um, every now and again, if I'm playing Steve Ray Vaughan or Jimi Hendrix or something like that, I'll lower it into E-flat standard, but I generally stay um, in E standard. So for that, you might actually want to look into a lighter gauge string, like an extra light or a light, um, to where you can bend those strings a little bit easier and still maintain standard E tuning, right? E standard tuning. Generally speaking, the heavier the gauge, the broader the bass frequency response of your guitar. Okay, so you're gonna get a, a more uh, powerful volume, higher level volume uh, bass frequency response, the thicker the string, the, the higher gauge, the heavier gauge string that you're using, okay? Um, and this actually also can be more accentuated by body styles of acoustic guitars, which we'll get to in a minute. So keep that in mind when you're choosing that the, uh, the heavier the gauge, the louder the bass strings are gonna be, okay? And you may not want that, maybe you do want that, but that's something to just consider there, okay? Sometimes you can get a hybrid set where you have like uh, thicker high strings and thinner low strings. Um, so you might take the high strings of a medium gauge and the low, the heavier, the uh, like the low E and the A and the D, might take those strings from a light set, 
okay? So that you're getting a little bit higher volume out of your uh, high strings. Um, be careful when you do that. Definitely need to set up the guitar right. You need to, you know, mess with the truss rod a little bit. Make sure it's set up. Make sure your um, your bridge is set up correctly um, so that you're adjusting for the, that, those tension differences in the strings, okay? Uh, this is definitely still going to be uh, to your personal style. All this stuff changes from person to person, so keep that in mind as we go through here. Um, since we're talking about string gauges, let's go ahead and dive into that right now and just get an idea um, for exactly what string gauge means. String gauge means the thickness of the string, okay? So the diameter of it, technically, I believe is what it is. Um, so the thickness of the string, and you can have light strings, you can light gauge strings, you have heavy gauge strings, all this stuff comes into play. Um, okay, so over an extra light set, you're usually look, looking at 0.010 to 0.047, okay? Uh, for a custom light, you're looking at 0.011 to 0.052. For a light gauge set, you're looking at generally 0.012 to 0.054. For a medium gauge set, you're looking at 0.013 to 0.056. And a heavy gauge is generally speaking 0.014 to 0.059. Now, every guitar company uses a different metric. Uh, for what they, A, what they call it, what is a light set, what is a medium set, there are medium lights, there's uh, heavies, you know, so, and every company has a different name for some of those. Uh, sometimes they're universal throughout, but a lot of times they're different. And also some companies call, uh, you know, extra lights at maybe a different uh, gauge. You know, you never know. Um, just double check the packaging before you purchase it to make sure it is the actual diameter that you want to use on your acoustic guitar, okay? Okay, now, the next thing is going to be, uh, oh, remember that electric guitar strings are inherently lighter in gauge than acoustic guitar strings. For example, a regular standard light set gauge set of electric guitar strings is going to be 0.009 to 0.042, okay? Whereas an extra light set of an acoustic is going to be 0.010 starting, okay? So take that into consideration when you play because you're, you might need to use that to just kind of, if you're an electric player, it'll give you an idea of where you're going to stand, okay? Body shape. Generally speaking, the larger the body style, the better the guitar will be for heavier gauge strings, okay? Like, for example, a jumbo. Um, is going to take heavy gauge strings really well, all right, in my opinion, okay, you know, everybody's got different opinions on this, but in my opinion, that's going to be the case. Um, the smaller the body style, you're going to get more volume regardless because the strings are thicker, um, but it just kind of depends on what your goals are, right, like, let's say you've got an orchestra model or a parlor model, um, sure, you can put those heavy gauge strings on there, I'm not sure that's what the intention of the parlor model is, though, right, it's supposed to be a, a smaller guitar, um, use the set of strings that you are feeling comfortable to play on, okay? Don't just throw heavy gauge strings on there because it's a smaller guitar and you want more volume. Just consider that as you're playing, okay? Um, a dreadnought body style is gonna produce more low end response, okay? I've just found that to be the case throughout. Um, some people may disagree with me, but dreadnoughts definitely give you more low end response, okay? I found that uh, a grand auditorium or a concert model is gonna give you a very even EQ across the board, like the lows won't be too much higher than the highs, or volume wise, okay? Um, the mids are gonna be pretty balanced. You're gonna be able to hear everything pretty well, uh, generally speaking, very good for finger style um, if you're looking for a, a, an actual acoustic guitar. So yeah, uh, that, that finger style is very well. I would say a Grand Auditorium does that well, um, but don't let that be the only thing that, that pushes you into a Grand Auditorium, or GA as we call it, if that's what you're looking for, okay? All right, so you have to start making some some choices, okay, when you choose your strings. Do you like your Dreadnought being bass heavy? Okay, if you do, go ahead and get yourself a nice set of mediums, okay, because it's going to just improve that bass response, okay? Um, if you don't like it being so bass heavy, maybe go for a slightly lighter gauge string or maybe get some hybrids, right, where your, um, your high E, your B, and your G are of from a medium set and your low end your low e your a and your d are from a light set okay so kind of tame that and balance it a bit um so that's up to you entirely you can check that out there's a lot of products like that on the market as well um let's see so for uh, oh if you're doing a ga and you want a a much higher bass response maybe you can go for a hybrid set to where you'll get like uh you know the low end of a medium uh, you know, EAD, e, and maybe the high end is going to be from a light set, 
right? So just keep that in mind. You can always do that mix and match. Um, just make sure that you're, like we said before, that your truss rod and that your um, bridge is set up properly, okay? All right, moving on, uh, string composition, okay? So you've got, uh, basically, acoustic guitar strings are made from our steel cores, and they're wound, like the lower four strings, the G, the D, the B, or, I'm sorry, the A and the low E, are wound with some type of metal, okay? Um, and, and generally speaking, it's bronze, in, uh, which is uh, copper and tin, okay? And the most popular ones are gonna be um, phosphor bronze and 8020 bronze. So you can see that everywhere, okay? It's gonna sit all over the place, all right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, 8020 bronze is gonna be uh, pretty bright, pretty clear tone, okay? Um, phosphor, it's gonna, it's gonna be nice and bright if you're a, like a, like a bluegrass player, you're probably gonna really like the brightness of 8020s, okay? Um, it kinda has a jangly, chimey sound to it uh, when they're new. Um, I Like I say in the article, I liken it unto like a sharpened pencil. Uh, it's really nice, really articulate, really specific, you know, uh, precise when you, when you first get them. Um, but as you use the pencil, it kind of dies out relatively fast, okay? So keep that in mind as you're choosing it. Uh, phosphor bronze is going to start out more mellow than an 8020 bronze, um, but it's going to last a little bit longer, okay? It's not going to eat mellow out even more quite as fast as an 8020 bronze would. Um, let's see. You can use those to, like, let's say you've got a really bright guitar, uh, maybe you want to go for phosphor bronze because it's not quite as bright as A20s. Maybe you've got a really dark guitar. Uh, I played an Alvarez recently. Um, there was a little bit dark guitar. It was made of all of mahogany. Maybe you want that a little bit brighter, so you throw some 8020s on there, okay? Um, see what I'm saying? You can use this to your advantage. You can make your guitar sound like what you want it to, okay? So keep that in mind as you're playing. Um, let's see, moving on here. Um, phosphor bronze is pretty even on the EQ. Uh, across the board, good, you know, bass, mid, and high frequency responses. Uh, there's a type called silk and steel. It's pretty unique. Um, it's got a steel core, but it's wrapped in either silk, copper, or nylon, okay? Um, and it's got still got a steel core, so it's still an acoustic steel core string, right? But it's a much warmer, much more mellow, softened tone. A lot of folk players like this. Um, type of string. Uh, let's say you've got a really bright guitar. Man, you've got to tame that. Maybe some silk and steels might work for you, okay? Okay, and then we come to coated acoustic guitar strings, or guitar strings in general, for that matter, because we got coated electrics too. But talking about uh, coated acoustics specifically, um, if you don't want to change strings, if you want your strings to last a year and a day, um, coated strings are the way to go. I mean, I just... I, I, you can't get around it. They're, they last a long time. They are coated in kind of like a polymer, though. Um, so they're going to feel a little different. They're going to feel nice and slick uh, when they first start out, and you're going to be able to move your, your fingers across the string very quickly, which some people might really like. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, the thing is, they're usually about three times the price of, like, uh, of a standard uncoated acoustic string, um, but they last usually three to five times as long as a standard acoustic string. I find that they sort of, to me, they act like what a compressor does to a signal, okay? So to me, they like compress the highs and compress the lows, but they they sing pretty well. They, the, the resonance is pretty good. But I find they're not quite as nuanced as, or as articulate as I like. Um, but again, man, I don't know. Like if you're traveling and if you're just going all over the place in the country, I don't know, it's hard to beat coated strings because they last so long under, under so many conditions. I mean, they'll even, they'll, they're even semi-corrosion resistant initially. So like if you live near the ocean, you got a lot of salt in the air. Now it's not great for the rest of your guitar, but man, your strings will be safe, okay? For at least as long as the coating lasts. Now they do tend to fleck off after a while. Um, it's not the end of the world. It actually is a good indicator of when you need to change your strings. So take that with a grain of salt. If you like a little more nuance, coated might not be the way to go for you um, as far as your, your volume. Um, if you do, if you don't care, coated, coated is great. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Finally, there's something called an aluminum bronze string. Uh, to me, uh, it's got a very good high response, very good low response. Kind of like the heavy metal EQ of acoustic guitars, okay? So 
something to definitely consider if you're like a metalhead, you really like heavy metal playing, heavy metal music. This is going to get you pretty close to the standard EQ response of a lot of uh, a lot of heavy metal guitar players like, but on an acoustic. Okay, so that's something to, to consider when you're choosing it, uh, your strings as well. Now, if you've got a guitar that's super mid-heavy, right? It's like really mid-heavy, and it's just it sounds kind of like a blankets over it. You could try these, and it probably would help even out the tone of your guitar, your acoustic guitar. Um, check it out. You know, let me know in the comments if you're throwing them on there. Um, I haven't put them on a on a mid-heavy guitar. But on guitars that uh, that are kind of generally even EQ, they tend to raise the the treble and raise the bass. Okay, so uh, try them out if you have if you have tried them out. Um, shoot me some comments down there in the comment section. Let me know how you like it. Let me know how they how they worked out for you. Okay. All right. So in the article, it just goes on to a couple of uh, uh, suggestions for what you can look at and what you can purchase. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it down there as far as um, what we're going to do for uh, suggestions on choosing how to choose what. Your criteria for getting an acoustic, uh, a great acoustic guitar string. Um, and remember, every guitar is different. Choose one that's going to work for your guitar best. You might have to do some trial and error. Okay, so another thing to consider is that uh, testing costs are going to be a little bit higher with coated strings. The uncoated strings are, are much more inexpensive. You can try them, and, and if you don't like them, pull them off, buy another set, you know, uh, for a third of the, of the price. So to take that into consideration when you're choosing uh, new acoustic guitar strings. Okay, hopefully this helped you out. Let me know if it did in the comment section. Hit that like button if it did. Um, if you like what you're seeing here and this stuff helps you, go ahead and please hit that subscribe button if you want notifications for videos, future videos on uh, Musa Lesson. Uh, that we're doing here future content go ahead and hit that uh, bell button so you can get those notifications because that's what you got to do these days uh, i guess um and remember uh we're just giving you information giving you things that's going to help you that's going to get you along your journey as a musician um and the last final thing is music is magic see you in the next video take care